What surprised me yesterday is when um, Heisen began to question about our understanding of how we've been defining industries since the last 50 years. And he's talking about um, new services and new agriculture that has many characteristics as um, manufacturing. Therefore, we are trying to broaden uh, the statistics of industry to cover all these sectors. And to me, this is um, very surprising and interesting at the same time. So traditionally, um, especially in uh, advanced countries such as UK, which was the first to industrialize, and the US and Japan, what we see is that there was a, tr uh, a movement of uh, resources or economic activities from agriculture to manufacturing. Then, over the course of development, as income increases and the country reaches a certain level of technology, we see movement from manufacturing to services. And this has also been followed, this, this same part has also been followed by Asian, um, Asian countries. But in the case of Africa, um, we've seen the movement of workers straight from um, agriculture into informal services. And there has not been really a strong movement from um, agriculture to manufacturing and other industries that are very productive. And this means that structural change has played a limited role in the, in the growth of African countries. And particularly, when you look at the, uh, the workers that are moving from agriculture, you see that they are moving from um, agriculture, informal agriculture activities, to informal trading activities in service sector. And this is what I call the informal tertiarization of African economies. For now, uh, it is very difficult to say that Africa is really deindustrializing. Um, but of course, there has not been any there have been policies to industrialize in Africa, but that, that's not really, that has not really worked out. So now African ca countries or leaders need to think carefully about what, what the future holds, especially with the emergence of technology, the spread of um, ICT and uh, with the reduction of transportation cost. Uh, this has very important impl implication on, on sectors and how they will play out in the future. So we need a very more strategic policy targeting sectors according to uh, countries' endowments and, and capabilities to be able to select um, sectors that, that will, will lead the future growth of African countries. Uh, workers are moving to informal services and these workers mostly are not protected. Um, so there's kind of job volatility, instability in, in the service sector. And that's what we call the labor market turbulence. So normally, and what we see is that uh, there is a kind of closed shop arrangement in the labor market of Africa, where closed shop arrangement is illegal in the EU and the US. In some African countries, it's actually institutionalized. And, and this prevents uh, young people from graduating school and to form entering formal sectors that are very, very productive. And as a result, most of them end up in the informal activities, or uh, workers from high school diplomas end up in informal activities. So what, what, what we need to do as African countries is really regulate the labor market and initiate policy that will protect workers in the service sector and, and, and prepare for the new industrial revolution.